for paycheck and deductions. Do you know what tax Do you know what Tax Freedom Day is? Tax Freedom Day is the first day each year that Americans work for themselves. In other words, every dollar earned before that date will go to pay taxes. It's a way to visualize your tax burden. In 2019, that day was April 16th, which means the first 105 days of the year will go to pay taxes. That equates to 29% of your pay goes to taxes. Today, you're going to learn about the different taxes and deductions that are deducted from your pay. What is compensation? Compensation is a total cash and non-cash payments that you give to an employee in exchange for the work they do for your business. One of the biggest expenses for businesses with employees, it's one of the business biggest expenses for businesses with employees, and it includes wages and, be and benefits. In this lesson, we will look at four types of compensation, hourly wages, salary wages, commissions, bo and bonuses. Hourly wages, uh, paid an hourly rate. Hourly rate multiplied by the hours worked. For example, if an employee, Ben, worked 40 hours and earned $10 per hour, their wages would be $400, 40 times 10. Considered non-exempt, which means they are not exempt from being paid overtime. If an hourly employee works over 40 hours per week, they are entitled to overtime pay. Overtime pay is one and a half times the regular rate. Ben's overtime rate would be $10 times one and a half, which is equal to $15. If Ben worked 52 hours in one week, he earned 40 times 10 at regular pay, plus 12 hours times 15, his overtime pay, that would equal $400 of regular pay plus $180 of overtime pay, so his total wages would be $580. Minimum wage uh, must be paid at, at, everyone must be paid at least minimum wage, which varies state to state. Minimum wage in Iowa is $7.25 an hour. Iowa is one of, the, of 21 states that follow the federal minimum wage rate. One exception is employees who make more than $30 in tips per month. Employers can pay a lower, page, lower wage of $4.35 for those jobs. Salary is quoted on an annual basis. Salaried workers have an annual amount, which is divided by the number of pay periods to calculate their pay. For example, if Ellie's annual salary is $60,000, she would earn $5,000 per month. 60,000 divided by 12 is $5,000. Most salaried employees are exempt employees, which means they are exempt from the overtime rules and the fair Labor Standards Act. Salary workers usually get more benefits as well as more responsibility. Commissions are oriented to production or sales, and bonuses is more goal-driven. So um, for commission, Joe earns 10% of, of his sales for commission. Sales were fifty or $5,000, so his pay is $500. Goal-driven? Joel will earn, this is for a bonus, of $10,000 if he reaches an annual sales of $500,000. Paycheck time periods. Companies vary as to when their employees are paid. The most common are weekly, twice a week, twice a month, or monthly. Actually, not twice a week. It'd be weekly every two weeks or bi-weekly, twice a month, or semi-monthly or monthly. Here are some ways to get paid. It can be by direct deposit where that your employer sends your paycheck straight to the bank. You don't have to handle the paper check. You could get paid a paper check where you actually have to go cash the check yourself. 
Or maybe you have a card and your pay gets put on your on your payroll card. Direct deposit. Pay is electronically deposited directly into your checking or savings account. The pro of that is it will save you time. There's no need to go to the bank and it's safe to use. Um, a drawback is you need to have a bank account. A paper check is a form of payment given to the employee who is responsible to cash or deposit, who they're responsible to cash or deposit it. Um, the pros of that is privacy, not sharing bank information with, with your employer, but the drawback to that is it's easy to lose and time consuming. You have to actually go to the bank and the bank's not open 24 hours a day. Payroll card is a prepaid card onto which an employer loads an employee's wages or salary each payday, similar to a prepaid debit card. The benefits of that is you don't need a bank account at all, uh, but a drawback to that is you could have extra fees associated with that. Payroll deductions. About one-third of your gross pay will be taken out by your employer for deductions. Some deductions are mandatory. Employers are required by law to withhold these taxes from employees' gross pay. Other deductions are voluntary, which could include health insurance, retirement, charitable contributions, union dues, etc. Pay slip. A pay slip shows your total earnings, deductions, and net pay for the pay period. A pay slip is received for each pay period. YTD is year to date and is a cumulative number since January 1. Mandatory taxes include federal income tax, state income tax, mm -hmm. local income tax, Federal Insurance Contribution Act, or FICA, which um, Social Security and Medicare are included in FICA. What are the taxes used for? The government uses it for national programs such as national defense, veterans and foreign affairs, social programs, physical, human, and community development, law enforcement, and interest on the national debt. State taxes. Um, most of state taxes go to education and health. Overall, the amount of federal and state taxes you pay depends on your current income tax rates, your gross income, your filing status, single, married, filing jointly or separately, and head of household, the number of dependents and allowances you claim on your W-4 form. The W-4 form, the Employees Withholding Allowance Certificate, the W-4, tells an employer how much federal income tax to deduct from your paycheck by calculating the number of exemptions. A dependent is a child or relative that depends on the employee's financial support. The key to filling out the W-4 correctly is to calculate how much you need to pay to the IRS so that you don't end up owing a large sum, a large sum in taxes. Whenever you get a job, this is one of the first things they're gonna have you fill out when they hire you. So it's important that you know how to fill this form out. How you claim your allowances on your W-4 will affect your taxes in different ways, okay? Claim all the legal allowances you're allowed. The goal here is to have all the money you possibly can in your take-home pay. Your take-home pay will be greater throughout the year, allowing you to invest or put the extra money in a savings account where it can accrue interest. Remember, this strategy means you're less likely to get a refund and there is a chance that you may have to pay in to the government at tax time. That's when you claim all of the legal allowances you're allow allowed. Then there's the other way that you can fill out the W-4. You can claim fewer allowances than you're permitted. <clears throat> the goal with this strategy is to have more taxes withheld and end up with a refund due to you at tax time. The downside is you will have missed out on any interest or other earnings that money could have generated had you invested it yourself rather than giving it to the government to hold until tax time. So it, I guess it's your, you know, those are two schools of thought. Um, I always claim fewer allowances than I'm permitted because then that way I know I won't have to pay in income tax at tax time and I'm more likely to be guaranteed 
um, a refund. So another thing to keep in mind here, um, there are some calculators and simulators that I would like for you to go through. We'll talk about that at the end of this video. Um, but slide 20 here is uh, Federal Insurance Contribution Act, FICA, is a federal law that requires two taxes to be withheld from pay, Social Security and Medicare. So Social Security helps older Americans, disabled workers, and for those that are suffering the loss of a spouse or a parent. That's 6.2% of your gross wages up to $137,700. Medicare is a federal health program for people 65 years of age or older, and that's 1.45% of your gross wages with no cap. Social Security, okay. Um, employee, employee payroll taxes, your employer must match the Social Security tax of 6.2% and the Medicare tax of 1.45% of your wages. So if you are self-employed, you are responsible for paying the entire 12.4% Social Security tax and 2.9% Medicare tax. There are other voluntary deductions. You can uh, have deductions made for charitable contributions, like the United Way, uh, employees' contribution to the health insurance, retirement, and additional life insurance. So your gross income is your income before deductions. Your net income is equal to your gross income minus your deductions. Your net income or net pay is your take home pay. So recognizing what is deducted from your paycheck will help you catch any errors and understand your net pay. So what you're gonna do next, um, is take a look at And then I guess to sum up here, recognizing what is deducted from your paycheck will help you catch any errors and understand your net pay. So here is your assignment, uh, 3-7A, your paycheck and deductions. Answer these questions and we'll go over them um, together as a class to check your work and your understanding. In addition, um, there's a link for this simulator in uh, today's lesson. Module one is payroll taxes and federal income tax withholding. Um, I'd like you to go through the simulator. This is completing the W-4. In May, you will take on the role of Lawrence Red Owl in order to learn how to complete Form W-4. So Lawrence Red Owl is single. Um, his background in May, he graduated from college, or this is you, and you got a job as a manager at a mall clothing store. You are not married, you have no children, no one else depends on you for your income or support. In May, you graduated from college with a degree in marketing. Congratulations, in June, you got a job as a manager of a clothing store in the mall. You will be paid a weekly salary and bonus based on store sales. You will begin work on July 1st. You want to impress your employer, so you will work only for the clothing store, giving the job all of your time and effort. Okay, you can, to review your personal information, you can always click here. So, uh, your employer asks you to complete Form W-4, Employees Withholding Allowance Certificate, to determine the amount of income tax to withhold from your pay. To complete the W-4, answer the following questions. Do you have more than one job? And if you don't remember, you can click Profile and look here. But if you recall, he wants to focus all of his efforts on his one job. So do you have more than one job? No. Is he married? No. Do you have children or others who will claim you? No. And you can check your answers here. So based on the information you provided, how many allowances will you claim? Hint, see line five of your W-4. To review your W-4, click on my W-4. So we're going to look at line five. Here's line five. Total number of allowances you are claiming from line H above or from the applicable worksheet on page two. So he's claiming one. Okay. That's what he's claiming. So let's go back. I'm going to close this window.
and I'm going to check my answers. And next, let's review what happens <clears throat> if you are single, earn $500 a week, and claim zero, one, or two withholding allowances. Can you describe the relationship between the number of allowances claimed on the W-4 and the amount of tax withheld? So if you claim no allowances, the amount of tax would be withheld is $61. So basically, the more allowances you claim, the less the amount of tax that's withheld in every paycheck. Okay, so as the number of allowances increases, the amount of federal income tax withheld decreases. Check your work. So, congratulations, Lawrence. You've successfully completed the W-4. I'm going to go back one here and just to show you. So even though if you claim zero allowances, they'll be taking more taxes out of every one of your paychecks, at tax time, you will less likely have to pay the government and you will more than likely receive a, a tax return. And you can also go to this link um, in today's lesson, and you can see here's um, the W-4, just for future use. If you click that, um, it will open the form here, and it's actually an editable PDF right here. You can type in all of your information. So, you know, when you're asked to fill this out for a job, you're going to fill in your name and Social Security number, address, and whether how you're filing uh, for most of you for your first job, it'll be single. Okay, um, then, then it will tell you complete steps two to four only if they apply to you. Otherwise, skip to step five. Okay, so two, do you have multiple jobs, jobs or does your spouse work? If none of those apply to you, skip it. Okay, then right here, complete steps three to four B on W-4 for only one of these jobs. Okay, well, we don't have more than one job, so we're going to skip down to step five. <clears throat> and you type, you sign this, and you date it, okay? Um, and then the employers fill that out. So, And then there's more instructions here. So if you need help filling it out, like here's the multiple jobs worksheet, the deductions worksheet, and so on. So um, 